hoping that we can share this session later on um, so other people can hear what we've discussed today. Um, if you would like to turn on closed captionings, you can click the three buttons, uh, the three dots on your menu um, and click turn on closed captioning. Um, and throughout the um, presentations, if you can just keep yourself on mute just to reduce any um, background noise, that would be great. And when we move on to the question and answer and discussion session, if you just want to use the raise your hand button or type questions in the chat, that would be great. So um, let's get started. And we've got our first speaker, Jamie from Too Good To Go. So thanks for joining us today. Hello, everybody. Thanks very much for inviting me today. I'm looking forward to speaking to you all and introducing you to the world of food waste. Um, so let me share my screen and we can get cracking. Here we go. Um, so I'm hoping you can all see my screen. Um, Elizabeth, do you just mind confirming? Yes, we can see. Thank you, Jamie. And hear you. Lovely stuff. So as I said, I wanted to speak to you all about food waste um, in the context of sustainable shopping and in sustainable cities and why it is so important and so imperative for us all to start changing the way that we engage with food um, so that we can ultimately reduce food waste and help the planet in the process. So this may be news to you all or you know, if, uh, if we're doing our job correctly, you'll already know, but a third of all food produced is wasted. And that really is a shocking statistic. You know, and with that, there's over, um, over 10 million tons of food which are wasted each year here in the UK. And this is having, you know, profound um, impacts across you know, three aspects. And these are three areas that I always like to sort of highlight on. And it's the it's the financial, social and environmental implications of food waste. So food waste itself is, you know, a, a economic issue. You know, here in the UK, it's costing us around about 20 billion pounds each year on throwing food away. Now, to put that into context, we spend around two and a half billion pounds on the annual police budget. So we spend more on throwing food away than we do on public services, which you know, to me just you know, really doesn't seem to make sense. You know, from a social perspective, you know, there's around about 870 plus million people who go to bed hungry every single day, yet there's more than enough food being produced to feed everyone. So in this sense, you know, food waste is really the true injustice here. But it's also a massive like environmental issue. Now, between eight to 10 percent of greenhouse gas emissions come from food waste. Now, that's not food being produced. That's actually just the food which is being thrown away. Now, what that means is that if food waste was a country, it would be the third largest greenhouse gas emitter after the US and China. You know, other sort of uh, comparatives we can use is that if we reduce food waste, it would be the equivalent of taking one in four cars off the road. So when we're talking about food waste itself and these you know, environmental issues um, and catastrophes that happen off the back of it, we're not just talking about the food that goes in the bin and whether that's composted or it ends up in landfill. We're not just talking about that. What we're talking about when we're talking about food waste is we're talking about all of those wasted resources that go in into producing it. So when we're wasting food, you know, the, the greenhouse gas emissions, which are produced to you know, convert our land, which are used you know, with, the, with the labor involved, you know, all the all the fertilizers which are used to, you know, make that land more fertile, the water that is used in the growing process or the washing of our food, the fuel and those air miles which are used to distribute that food from farm to fork, the electricity which is used all along that process as well. All of that energy, all of those resources which go into it are ultimately wasted. 
if we throw that food away. Now we know that all of these, all of these aspects here, which I've just sort of mentioned, they're, they're contributing to the effects of climate change. So when we are wasting food, we're creating unnecessary emissions, which is ultimately harming our planet. So if there's one thing I can do today is I want to leave you all with this, um, with this nugget of information. Now, this comes from the, from the Drawdown Report, which states that reducing food waste is the most immediate, most impactful, and the simplest action that we as individuals or as businesses can do um, to curb the effects of climate change. Now, this drawdown report is the most comprehensive um, report on climate change that has ever been created. So, as I say, if there's one thing I can leave you all with today, it is to is to recognize that we as individuals, we can really benefit our climate um, and help in this notion of sustainability by just reducing our food waste. So when this comes to, you know, talking about the way in which we're shopping, you know, how can we can we shop in a sustainable sense which is not wasteful particularly when we're talking about food so whether that's um you know whether that's trying to utilize technology or platforms like um like myself at too good to go i'll go into that in a bit more detail or whether it's just planning but it is it's 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 really urging you all to challenge yourselves to reduce the amount of food that you're wasting as individuals. Now, what I'm hoping to, to do as well is, is change this statistic, reverse the statistic that, you know, 70% of the British public are unaware of the, of the connection between food waste and climate change. And I realize there's a typo there, not 70% are aware, but 70% of the British public are unaware. So that is a really sort of startling statistic when we know that reducing food waste itself is the most um, is the immediate solution that we can do to reverse the effects of climate change. So, you know, as residents of, of Wandsworth Council, um, potentially as business owners in Wandsworth Council or, or as other sort of members of society, you know, I really urge you to take this on. Um, and challenge yourselves to start reducing food waste, but also passing this message on that reducing food waste is connected to reducing the effects of climate change. So this is where you know I want to introduce what I do. Um, and here at Too Good To Go, we are a, a social impact company that unsurprisingly fights food waste. And we have a we have a vision, you know, a dream that of, of a of a planet with no food waste. And we want to do this, you know, by inspiring people like yourselves and to empower you so that we can all fight food waste together, because this is a fight. It's not something that no individual can achieve on their own, but it really involves us all pushing in the same direction. So a little about about ourselves, as I, as I mentioned, we're a social impact company. We're a we're a B Corp, which is all about fighting food waste. And we predominantly do this through our through our marketplace, through our mobile app. And this is a platform which connects you know, consumers, citizens, you know, much like yourselves, with businesses who have surplus food for sale. So it's a it's a simple and fun way for people to actively fight food waste. But what this um, you know what this marketplace, what this app does is is it allows us to fund our other initiatives. It's what we call our movement around food waste, and this is this is you know helping us to fight food waste in households. So it's producing resources, um, you know, blogs, tips and tricks to allow you know residents like yourselves to be able to effectively fight food waste in the work that we. Do whether that's um, you know helping them through our marketplace, but also through webinars and additional support to really allow these businesses to be as sustainable as possible in the context of food waste. It's also referring to the work that we do with schools 
So when we're talking about schools, that's everyone from sort of learning their ABC through to those who are completing their PhDs. It really is about inspiring, inspiring students to be able to, to fight food waste and take this on, take these learnings so that the generations to come don't behave in the same way, same way that we do when it comes to our food. Um, but finally, it's also through the work that we do in public affairs. So really trying to spark some sort of policy change to really shake up our food system and make it more sustainable so that we can really reduce food waste effectively across all means. So our, our app itself, you know, it is a it's a global marketplace. You know, it's available in 15 countries um, across the world. So it's 14 uh, countries in Europe launched in the US. You know, we have over 20 million users, um, 60,000 different food businesses we work with who collectively have rescued over 52 million meals from going to waste. We're present in London and we're, we're very active in the Wandsworth and, and Richmond boroughs as well. But I would, you know, encourage you to download the, the, the mobile app see what businesses are, are, are around you. And if there are any other businesses you would like to see their fighting food with us, fighting food waste with us, please get in touch. So how it works is a user logs on to the to, to go platform. They'll see a list of participating food businesses. Now a, a user goes on to the app, they purchase what we refer to as a magic bag and then go to that business and collect it during a specific collection window, usually the end of service. Now, what a, a user is doing is, you know, they don't actually know, you know sort of what they're going to collect. And this is the concept of the magic bag. So the very notion of food waste is kind of unpredictable. You know, we don't know what food is going to be left over come the end of service. So this is a sustainable way for people to fight food waste, but also sort of enjoy and discover amazing foods that would otherwise go to waste. So it's a bit like, you know, a bit of a lucky dip. Um, it's a bit of fun and it's quite exciting. Uh, but, you know, we find that, you know, this, this aspect of fun, this, this magic aspect is so important to fighting food waste because that really helps in terms of engaging people. You know, when I say like, what's more fun than going to a, a French patisserie and uh, rescuing, you know, in, uh, sort of an entire, entire cake. It's, it really is a fantastic way of fighting food waste. But with that, you know, there are some indications as to what you will receive. So if you've ordered from a, a bakery, for example, uh, you might not know exactly what baked goods you're going to get. But, you know, you can be pretty darn sure you're going to go home with some breads or croissants or cakes. Um, rather than uh, rather than some sushi or, or fish and chips, so the 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 proof is in the name, so to speak. Um, but this whole concept is is something that we think is you know it's it's what we term a a win win, a sustainable way, as I say, for businesses, um, users, and of course our planet to to really fight food waste together. So it's a you know it's a win for businesses who are able to cut down on on their waste. They're able to reach new customers and recover sunk costs. You know, it's a it's a win for our for our users, for the consumers of the app, um, and for those shoppers because they're able to you know discover amazing foods. Um, you know, they're able to you know enjoy some some delicious food, but all at prices that you know don't cost the earth. It's all at a a, a reduced price, but ultimately you know it is a is a win for the planet. You know, because this food would otherwise go to waste. So it's it's allowing businesses and consumers to work together to rescue food so that it doesn't doesn't go in the bin. So that is that's too good to go in a nutshell. Um, I think we'll be taking questions at the end, um, but I would encourage you all if you haven't already to to download the platform. Um, too good to go. It's available on uh, the App Store and play store and really just see what is available in your area you know we want to be able to you know make you know ones with itself into a into a zero waste um a zero food waste uh, city into it into an area or part of london um and you know we can only really achieve this 
by working with you residents, but also with the businesses and the council itself. Uh, so thanks very much, everybody, for uh, for tuning in. I hope that's been slightly insightful into, into what we're doing at Too Good To Go. And as I say, if I could leave you with one thing, it's to recognize that fighting food waste is the number one, it's the most simple, most effective means of reversing the effects of climate change. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Thanks, Jamie. That was a great presentation and really interesting to hear. Um, so we're going to move on to Tanya, who um, manages um, BYO Tooting. So I'm just going to share my screen with her presentation um, and we'll get started. Maybe. I presume you can hear me. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Um, as mentioned, my name is Tanya and I am from BYO in Tooting Market. We are a zero waste shop or a refill station, however you want to look at it. Um, and our main goal is to reduce plastic and unnecessary packaging and to reduce food waste. Can you hit the next slide? Sorry. Yeah. We live in a world, <clears throat> most of us are time poor and extremely busy. Uh, and where convenience is key, a place where when something breaks or no longer works, then we can find an, an affordable alternative and replacement at the click of a button. And this is taking a toll on our planet. Um, there are more and more, we're seeing more and more visibility from documentaries to articles to amazing com other companies like Too Good To Go coming up and giving us real life facts on where our waste is going and how much we are wasting. Um, we've seen how much of our waste gets shipped across the world and sits in another country in a big field forever. Um, and we've seen images like this where our oceans are full of plastic and waste and what it's doing to our wildlife and unfortunately to us. Um, yeah, we've, I mean, we've all been to a beach recently, I'm sure, here or abroad, and sadly, we get to see what the ocean is bringing back to us, um, which just means that it is full of a lot of our mess, waste, dirt, unfortunately. So the idea for the shop, I mean, was to create, can we hit the next slide, please, was to create an alternative way of shopping for myself um, and, of course, for my local community, um, a place to help us slow down, to be more conscious and thoughtful in how we're buying and what we're buying, um, and a place where we could learn and share a lot about alternative products and ingredients or different things that we use at home. For It's just become the most beautiful hub where the community will come in and share things like the boiled linseeds and the gel that comes out of it is the most incredible conditioner for your hair or the different uses that customers are using citric acid for. Um, and so it's just the most beautiful thing to see how people are in the shop together and sharing ideas and alternative ways um, to be more creative with more natural products and to just use what we have at home. <clears throat> so we stock um, food, dry food, so anything from pastas, rice, cereals, pulses, nuts, uh, detergents, toiletries, oils, vinegars, and everything is sold by weight. So we're going, we're going old school. Can we do the next slide? Thank you. Um, you bring your own containers or your own bags to fill up. So if you're washing up liquid finishes, you bring it to the shop and we can refill it. So reducing your recycling packaging. Um, or if you're trying out a new recipe and you need the smallest amount of something, for example, arrowroot, um, you can come in and buy just the amount you need. So it might be a product you never use again or don't like, but it means it doesn't sit, a big chunk of it doesn't sit in your cupboard for all eternity. So all of that is possible at these kind of shops. We, um, we buy mostly in bulk and we do everything possible to try and source from companies that are sustainable or doing their bit um, and package their items in things that can be recycled more easily. It's not perfect, nothing is, but we really do our best to try and source from
from the best companies possible. Um, our toiletries and detergents are mostly sourced from UK-based companies, small companies with a big focus on more natural and biodegradable products, which is beautiful to see because there's just so many more people and companies trying to do this. Um, and they have mostly created a circular loop system. So they come and collect, clean and reuse these drums, which means that we're saving a lot of waste along the whole um, supply chain. I think we can go to the next slide. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so we are so lucky to live in a world where we put out our trash and it's gone in the morning when we wake up. And it does make us feel that we've done Albert, um, but I think it's increasingly obvious that there is a lot more that we can do um, because there's only a really small amount or percentage of our waste that is, is able to be recycled or is recycled. There are so many different types of plastics and different types of packaging that we receive and consume on a daily basis um, and the back end, the recycling plants, it's just impossible to them to be able to recycle and reuse all of these different types of products. So from our perspective of a consumer, we could the change we could make is try to be a bit more conscious on what we're bringing into our homes um, and getting a bit more of a deeper understanding of which items would be able to go back to be recycled or have another life. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have the choice to be a bit more conscious in, in how we try and reduce the waste in our households. Can we go to the next slide? Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of Bea Johnson. She's a bit of a zero waste guru. And she's created these this kind of philosophy around these five, the five R's, which I think is really useful because we all have very different lives. We all consume different things and in different ways. Um, so it's not prescriptive and it's that you have to do X. I love that we can all introduce these things into our lives the way it works for us. So I thought I would just run through this a little bit in case you haven't heard about it, just to give you an idea. And maybe when you're shopping and consuming and out and about in the future, this might stick in your mind and you might make some changes. So her philosophy really is to refuse what you don't need, reduce what you do need, reuse what you consume and recycle or rot compost the rest. Um, which is sounds quite big but it's the really small little changes that make really big differences in the back end so we can all refuse for example the straw in our drink or the goodie bag at an event with another pen or another thing that we definitely don't need that goes into the drawer that we'll never look at again um business cards or toiletries in a hotel room i guess we could just open one instead of five of them. Just these small little changes that we could make to refuse the things that may be necessarily, we don't necessarily need at the time. Um, yeah, because every single thing that we accept creates a demand to make some more. So it's just being a little bit more conscious on how we're accepting things into our lives. Um, reduce, the next R. So as we grow, as the population grows, so does our consumption and the demand. Um, and obviously there's a finite um, amount of resources that we constantly are tapping into. So reducing, reducing the amount of food we, we eat and waste, as Jamie mentioned, incredible things are what they're doing. Um, and just live a more simple life um, that allows us to focus on quant quality versus quantity um, and maybe experiences instead of stuff. Um, so small things that we could do is borrow, borrow from each other, borrow tools. Um, we have them, I mean, COVID has been just an awful year, but it's also brought our community so much closer together. For example, people on our street now have a WhatsApp group and we borrow, we borrow tools from one another or things that we don't necessarily all need and can be shared, which is really incredible to see. Um, Glasses, uh, sunglasses or reading glasses, almost every eyewear company now allows you to reframe, sorry, to relens your glasses. And again, so anytime there's a scratch or it's not working, instead of throwing it out, it's to be a bit more thoughtful and reuse them um, to reduce the waste. And the next R is reuse. Um, so we got used to, I think it's been drummed into all of us to bring our shopping bags with us 
when we go looking or shopping for groceries. Um, we could do the same with many different things, including a coffee cup um, or returning plant pots back to nurseries when we're done with them or returning the hangers um, to dry cleaners. Little things where items can be reused uh, for com giving those back to companies who use them on a daily basis makes huge impact of as long as they can be reused. Um, and again, recycle, I did mention that before. You, I don't think we're ever going to remove recycling from our lives, but it's just about being a little bit more conscious about how we're purchasing. So, for example, you could buy oil that comes in a plastic container, uh, and it's really difficult to clean oil um, off a plastic container anyway. Um, and generally, in most shops, you'll have on the other side the oil in glass. And it's just these small, tiny changes that could be made um, that you know that glass can be recycled in a much easier way, and it's more likely that it has a second, third, fourth, five, fifth life. Uh, and then composting. Of course, we don't all have space or the ability to have a compost at home, but most uh, councils do have the ability to have that system and have a little box at home that we can send off. Um, so it's definitely worth, if you're not able to do it in your in your area to request it from the council, because I guess demand is, as there's more demand, there'll be hopefully um, more and more options like this available for us. Uh, yes, and I guess that's what we were hoping to create with the shop. Uh, there are so many different similar shops and companies opening up across the UK. Um, there is a website called Zero Waste Near Me, um, and they should have a list of all of these type of shops or similar places where you can go and refill. Um, so have a look and see what's local to you. Go and have a visit, have a chat. Um, and see if there's something that you can implement into your life and to make any changes. And that's me. Great, thank you so much, Tanya, and some great um, tips in there. So now we're going to open up um, for question and answers um, and have a bit of a discussion. So if anybody has a question, if you want to use the raise your hand button, which you'll find in the menu or write a question in the chat, um, please feel free to do so. Um, so have we got any questions from the group? Vicky? Uh, yes, hi. Um, you mentioned something about glasses, um, about having them sort of, you, you could do something with glasses. I presume you mean spectacles. Because um, I was wondering what you could do, because I know the local opticians no longer take old old glasses and people have been asking what can we do with them because um, how can you reuse those in a, in a useful way if opticians won't take them for sharing them onwards yeah i was meaning meaning spectacles um i was mentioning as in i think spec savers all the way down to cubits so a wide variety of different types of organizations allow you to relens them so i had both my sunglasses and my glasses uh, upgraded with my subscription and, and obviously cleaner and newer lenses this year um, so that's a whole another few years of life hopefully unless I lose them um, of reusing my glasses um, so obviously that is still available I think in most opticians or companies that sell glasses uh, if you really were uh, I'm actually not 100% sure if there is anyone that would accept just the glasses for them to reuse but I'm pretty sure if it's not a second-hand shop that there must be a place that would necessarily refurbish glasses for underprivileged people or people who can't afford it. I don't yeah, have an exact I just, name. Yeah, I just, I just wondered, I wondered if you knew about that because they used to, opticians used to take glasses and have them uh, sent out to third world countries and have opticians that, that end sort of reuse them there. But they stopped doing it because they just said it was financially ridiculous. They just couldn't couldn't afford to do that. So I just wondered whether or not you knew of somewhere similar so that if you do have lots of old glasses, you've already used the ones that you you can reframe yourself and relens yourself, but you've got all the other old ones. And I just I just thought maybe you'd know of somewhere, but I think it's one of those issues that there maybe isn't a solution at the moment. Yeah, I can't say that I know for sure, uh, to be honest, but it's something I'm going to look into. Thank you. 
Thanks, Vicky, for your question. Um, I see we've got another hand raised. Um, Judith, have you got a question? Sorry. There we go. Oh, you're muted. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, the, uh, the, I mean, I wish we could have a refill station in Putney. I mean, about eighteen months ago, did. Um, and perhaps when the retail situation was a bit stronger, um, a number of people tried to identify premises in Putney, which would be economic to run a, a zero waste shop without any success at all. So I kind of want to start off from a slightly defeatist angle. And that is, I am extremely worried about how much uh, of the plastic waste um, and particularly thin film plastic. Now, it, at the moment, it is true, if you go to the main weight rows in Putney, or I think Sainsbury's, there is a bin, not a very big bin, where you can recycle carrier bags and bread wrappers. But I'm thinking about all the other thin film plastics, the things that come around magazines, the things that come on the top of recycle. If you have a recyclable plastic tray, it has an unrecyclable plastic film on it. And I, I mean, I would prefer that we had as many zero waste shops as possible. But until then, I do think that we need far more facilities for recycling thin film plastic. Because, yeah. you know, I mean, keen as I am to reduce it, I'm not sure that I'm going to keep every piece that I rip off of anything and wait till I next go to Weight Rose. We need more places where you can put thin film plastic. Yeah, I think that that is the, I mean, that is one of the areas that our recycling plants are not able to detect or do anything with. So those kind of plastics, unfortunately, at the, this moment through our normal recycling will not be recycled. There are uh, companies like First Mile who are working closer and closer with businesses, uh, some, someone that we use for anything that we do have that needs to be recycled. Um, that they their plants really breaks everything down and they are find ways to recycle every single thing from coffee beans to that plastic that you're talking about. Um, so I do think that the more pressure that we as consumers put on these organizations to find the alternative ways, well, one, to find alternative, alternative, alternative pa packaging, but two, to work with people like First Mile, et cetera, that if we bring things to them, we know for sure that they can be recycled. Um, but I do think the demand, we need to create that demand or refuse again, if we keep refusing certain packaging, um, find alternative ways. I'm, I know that a lot of places, I guess it depends where you're shopping and how, you can go to the deli, meat, cheese delis and actually take a Tupperware and they can fill it rather than purchasing. But I know that's not always an option. Um, the, that, that plastic is, probably one of the biggest problems to be honest the things that our sellers come wrapped in and it's unfortunately changing uh, how we shop and trying to reduce that plastic as much as possible until at some point it's made out of something that can be recycled yeah i think it's something that the the council really need to think about quite a lot about just having more places where play i mean first mile is fine but they're not going to come around to everybody's house no. we have to have more collection points where we can put that kind of difficult to recycle stuff and it's quite interesting that the man from corey waste on the recycling session the other day said that he i mean you know we were talking about how much co2 all this thin film plastic makes in in, in the incinerator and it also messes up his incinerator so he's pretty keen that we get rid of it too there is also, I mean, I've seen it more and more. I actually don't have anything local to me, even though I keep looking and trying. Uh, companies like TerraCycle, where they have specific bins for different things. So it could be um, crisp packaging or it could be toiletries, uh, as in you know, all your creams. They've got different boxes. And I know that various different communities have rallied together to get them local to them. So they've got that drop box and TerraCycle then come and collect them. So if that's something that maybe you can rally with your community, which is what I'm trying to do, because we don't have anything local here either. OK, that's really helpful. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Judith, for your questions and Tonya for your answers. 
Um, I see we've got another hand raised, so Councillor um, Henderson. Thank you. Yes, uh, Graham Henderson. Um, a councillor for Earlsville. Um, two, two questions. Okay. So first, um, you, you like, what do you think the council can do to encourage and help sustainable shopping? Um, and second, secondly, um, have you spoken to Wandsworth Chamber of Commerce? Uh, they actually had a session themselves, um, which I, I don't think was strictly sort of part of a council's climate change uh, forum, uh, but it was actually on uh, environmental and sustainable businesses. Um, and I think um, it's only maybe worth have, having a chat to them if you haven't already done so. Uh, but I suppose the question really is how can we sort of take, take this forward? Um, can I say on single use plastic uh, and recycling, I certain, certainly take the point. Um, and we are certainly trying to press the council to expand uh, the range of recycling uh, that happens in Onsworth. Um, uh, we do suffer, from, well, we benefit from the fact we're on the river. Uh, we send all our waste uh, down by river uh, to Pelvic here, which is good in one sense, um, but it is incinerated um, and it generates considerable <laughs> amounts of carbon dioxide. Um, so we do still need very much to focus very heavily and very aggressively on reducing the waste, which we as an inner London borough generate. Thank you. Thank you for those points, Councillor Henderson. Um, Tanya, did you want to say anything on that or we can look at the next question? Yeah, sure. I have spoken to Chamber of Commerce. I actually missed their, their session. Um, it's, I think it's a continued discussion. I, I mean, for example, things like, we're in Tooting market and even in the market, we aren't doing everything we can. I mean, as a market, we could be a lot more sustainable that it brings all the companies together. So there's just so much more we can do to rally together as a community to make these changes rather than necessarily expecting one business to be able to do it, do it all. Uh, and I think we've got a lot more work to do on that, to be honest. Thank you. Um, I can see Anna in the chat has written to Jamie um, about wanting to get in touch about Too Good To Go. Anna, do you want to sort of explain that question a little bit more? Hi there. Um, yeah, no, I would just love to talk Too Good To Go and inquire more about some of the businesses. Um, I work helping businesses in Putney area. And I know there are a few um, that are signed up who do too good to go in the area, but I would love to chat with Jamie about how to publicize themselves for more of the businesses to see if anyone would be interested in, in joining up ready for uh, 2021. Fantastic, Anna. No, that's uh, we love to hear that type of enthusiasm. Um, I'll uh, I'll write my email in the in the chat function, and then we could take this uh, off offline and and see 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 what we can do to get more businesses involved in your area. Wonderful. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Tanya. Did you want to come in on that? I just wanted to ask you, Jamie. Sorry, I had this random thought, and I didn't know if that's something that you offer. But are we able to? almost purchase one of the magic bags as a gift or, you know, prepay and have someone else collected? Is there a way to almost pay that forward for someone or to someone? Um, sorry, do you mind just sort of uh, specifying that in a little more detail? Um, so if I knew there was someone underprivileged or homeless or uh, and purchasing one of the magic bags, but not for me or not for my collection, is there a way to almost have it as a gift or have okay, it? Okay, right. Getting it. Yeah, so through it was just a app. random thought. I did. Mm -hmm. So through the platform, what, what you can actually do is support um, uh, support fair share. So through, um, uh, through the app, uh, we encourage our users to make donations uh, to support fair share. So there's 
and that that uh, that money goes straight to fair share and helps them um by by feeding frontline charities across the uk cool thanks thanks both um so we've got another hand raised from annalisa so she's one of my colleagues um in the policy team Hi, thanks, Elizabeth, um, and thanks, Jamie and Tanya, for some really insightful presentations. I, 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 this is a topic that's really close to my heart myself, and actually, all the stuff that was covered was was awesome. I've got so many takeaways. Um, on the on the recycling point of the of um, film and plastic bags and things, I know that you can at some large supermarkets, there are collection points for carrier bags, but they also cover things like bread bags and um, sort of breakfast cereal liners, bubble wrap, that kind of thing. So there are some points in the largest supermarkets. Um, you do have to dig around to find where they are, but um, that's sometimes helpful. But I did have a couple of questions for Tanya and Jamie. Um, Tanya, I mean, one of the things that strikes me is that we don't want to recycle stuff. What we want to do is avoid packaging and that kind of thing in the first place anyway. Um, so Tanya, I've been in your shop and, you know, everything is kind of packaging free. Um, but what else do you do to select which products? I know you mentioned it was a lot of local products um but is there anything else around like the type of products that you have are they organic are they fair trade do they have palm oil is that, are those the things you're looking at as well um and and jamie is the um i think actually for both of you um from an affordability perspective i think there's a um there's this expectation that you have to be reasonably well off um, to go to either a zero waste shop um, or indeed you know some of the businesses who you work with um, Jamie um, can sometimes be more expensive like how affordable is is this stuff for um, people on um, sort of lower budgets um, thanks yeah that, that's a really good question and thanks very much for raising that I think you know the the approach to sustainability particularly in food, has often been that it is the, the more expensive uh, option and it often prices people uh, out of the market or it, 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 it um, um, you know, it, it reduces that ex accessibility and thus its engagement. And that's very much why we've developed Too Good To Go in the way that it is. So the, the food that people are collecting through Too Good To Go is all at a reduced price. And on average, it's a, it's around about three pounds fifty nine, I believe, is the average price for uh, for food on the Too Good to Go app. So, collect for let's say it's three pound fifty nine would be food that at its full retail price would be three times that value. Um, and there's a few reasons behind that. One is is we don't want to incentivize businesses. It really is as a way of just redistributing that surplus. To allow them to um, uh, uh, allow them to recover sunk costs rather than generate profit, um, and also it is it is around this notion of accessibility. You know, we're wanting to show people that you, know, you are able to have a sustainable diet through fighting food waste um, with with Too Good To Go. Yeah, it is. It's really interesting. I think the the concept or the the thought is that coming to a zero waste shop is going to be a lot more expensive than a normal um, shopping experience. We we have a healthy mix between organic and non organic products, which means it's a bit more open for you know for different costs. Um, we do everything we can to buy in bulk and from organisations that are either part of a distribution or co-op which makes it again more affordable um, and sustainable for our local community um, i would say some products most products definitely in the food range are pr pretty similar costs to what we would find in a normal supermarket or any supermarket um, but realistically there are some really low cost supermarkets that we we cannot compete with um, and this goes down to the you know the accessories and um, toiletries or detergent the companies they're doing everything they can to grow and to scale but they are still really small organizations a lot of products are made by hand um, so it does seem like the upfront cost might be but in most cases 
products do last a lot longer. Um, so is that like cost versus how much would you have spent on tooth, toothpaste in a normal tube rather than this um, handmade toothpaste with natural products, no fluoride, etc. So I guess one, it depends on what your drive is. Um, but a lot of our products are from much smaller companies. They're all biodegradable, um, not necessarily all organic, but all using natural products. So much better for the environment and us. Unfortunately, sometimes that does come at a bigger cost just because of um, how small the companies are. So I guess it depends. I do think if you were going to just try and have eat um, foods that are closest to its natural state, I think you can still get that in most um, zero waste shops at a quite a reasonable price. I think if anything gets a bit more fancy and handmade chocolate, then all that does come at a cost. Yeah, thanks. That's really helpful. I think there's also this impression, isn't there, that um, you have to buy all of these new fancy Hessian bags to bring to your shop so that you can take those products away with you. Um, yeah. But in fact, you can just use anything. So you could use an old jam jar or something like that. It doesn't, you don't have to buy lots of new um, carrier bags or anything like that to go and get yeah. the products that you just uh, already had. I love it because every single customer comes with something different. So it could just be like Ziploc bags all the way to like reusing their wine bottles for all the detergents or toiletries. I mean, it's such a wide range. And it, the point is, it's using what you've got in your cupboard. Um, so yeah, I definitely agree. Investing in all the new fancy containers is completely unnecessary. Totally your choice if that's what you want your cupboard to look like. Um, but I'm sure we've all got a few Tupperwares or bags in our houses that can be reused. Great. Thank you, Tonya. Um, I've just seen in the chat we had a question, um, I guess this kind of follows on with what Annalise was asking about um, the suppliers available in the shop. Um, so E. Wright, I think you've just rejoined the call, um, so that, that was one of your questions. Um, so Tonya, are you able to respond to that about um, our details of your suppliers available in the shop? Oh yeah, so we, we're not white labeling or our suppliers uh, in most cases I mean the food is a bit more difficult because they are sourced from different places but detergents toiletries oils uh, we've got full visibility on the source uh, where it's made where it comes from the ingredients etc um, and again and while nothing is perfect we do and it's not just me I say we because the community of zero waste shops or refill stations is incredible and there's all these groups that are working together to try and put more pressure on different companies or buying in bulk if we've got different shops that are close to us to really try and make this one more affordable and make more sense for the vision that we have for the shop. Um, so it's trying to find organizations or suppliers that either have their food in uh, brown bags or packaging if possible obviously it's not possible for all products um, again or finding the suppliers who have the, the circular loop system so where they take the containers back wash them reuse them so it is really just sourcing it but it's it's just such an incredible time right now because there's so many different companies uh, with these new and different ideas at the moment so it's just so interesting to see how many more are, are coming up on a week, monthly basis since we've opened Thanks, Tonya. Um, so just one question um, that we've sort of thought about recently is around how COVID has impacted um, the sort of sustainable shopping agenda. Um, Jamie, do you want to go first? And then Tonya, we can hear from you as well. You're on mute, Jamie. Apologies. Um, so I'll I'll take that question, but I'll 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 phrase it and I'll, I'll put it, talk about it through the lens of food waste and how COVID's really affected that. So it's, you know, if we look at, look at the situation back in March, you know, when we had panic buying and, you know, we had empty shelves and things like that. And I think that really demonstrated to everyone just the importance of food. Um, and we all sort of experienced it from a scarcity perspective. Um, and that has, like, I think, fundamentally helped just improve people's value of food. So whereas previously, you know, we've 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 viewed food as something which is just incredibly accessible 
you know, we can go to the shop at any time and pick up food from any anywhere across the world. What COVID has done has, uh, you know, has, I guess, reignited that love and need for food. And when I talk about that, I'm talking about food as that, um, as, as something that is intrinsic for our own survival, for our own development. But it is also that social glue which brings us together. So whether that's around the dinner table with friends or with family, I mean, we haven't been able to do it in its in its most enjoyable form because of the. You see where I'm going, um, but in addition to that, with with COVID and with with national lockdowns, we've seen like sort of the hospitality sector and and uh, restaurant trade just effectively close overnight, um, and what's that meant is just that supply chains have been disrupted and food hasn't been able to get to where it was intended to be. So ultimately, it didn't mean that you know food waste was stopping. It just meant that that food waste was happening further up the supply chain. So there was this, this, um, you know, this issue that we've seen um, with COVID where we haven't had the most uh, robust supply chains, meaning that we, we haven't been able to get food to a direct route to market. So what we've been doing a lot is, is working with suppliers to ensure that consumers can rescue surplus products direct from these food suppliers, which would be, um, uh, which would usually be um, uh, so, you know, sourcing the food for the for the hospitality sector. Great, thanks, Jamie. And Tanya, have you experienced any changes um, as a result of COVID? Yeah, it's a tricky one. I mean, we we have obviously had the most crazy year. Um, and so we need to focus on health first, obviously. Um, and there's also such a, like the fine line between trying to keep businesses alive and going uh, and versus waste, because we've obviously seen a much more takeaway culture, single use culture, coffee cups aren't welcome, uh, reusable, sorry, coffee cups aren't really welcome in coffee shops anymore. Um, pints are, are only sold in plastic now. Um, there's just... We've definitely, definitely seen a big uptake in our single use of packaging this year. But I also think it's hopefully temporary and hopefully once things settle down a bit, we go back. Because I thought as a society, we were making really, really big impact um, and being a lot more conscious in how we were shopping and reusing things. So I hope that we do go back to it once we can, because obviously there are certain things that are more important right now. Um, it just it, it's just really sad to walk around on the streets and see all the single use masks. Um, mm. I do wish that we would again, we need to be healthy, we need to be careful, but also there's ways of reusing it and having a few and washing them rather than purchasing them and potentially just using them once. So I guess that's what's really hard to see lately. Um, but I'm also conscious that not even just health, just feeling more confident in what you're doing if you're not having that anxiety or, or worry then you're gonna, your immune system's better. So, you know, there's more important things at, at the moment, sadly, we need to worry about our health first, um, and hopefully we can resume where we left off once this is all in a better place. I think on that note as well, there's been so many, you know, in, in like the face of adversity, there has been so many positive things which have happened. Um, so, you know, when, I, when I'm talking about food waste, I, I was saying how, you know, there was this sort of renewed, and revive connection with food. And what we saw was people were reducing um, the amount of food they, they were wasting uh, within the home. So it's, yes, it's been awful what, what, what is happening, but there has been some positives, which has been some positive changes in behavior. So I just really hope that after all of this, um, you know, we don't fall back into, into um, you know, those, those, old, those old bad habits, but can continue some of the positive things. Yeah. Thanks both. Great, great points made by both of you. Um, so just before we finish, what we've been doing throughout the week is asking people to make positive pledges. So as a result of hearing the speakers today, um, any changes or sort of commitments you want to make um, in terms of sustainable shopping. So feel free to put them in the chat or raise your hand and you can sort of share with the group what you're thinking you might do to shop more sustainably. So is there anybody that wants to start?
So one thing I'm thinking of doing is um, looking in my local area to see if there are any BYO shops um, to see how I can reduce the amount of plastic and packaging in the things that I'm buying. Um, Annalisa, I see you've got your hand up. Um, yeah, I think one of the things that um, has really hit home this week across the whole of the climate summit sessions, but particularly this one was um, I think there's a, a this huge demand for online shopping, um, but things aren't necessarily available when you want them to be available. Um, and actually, we don't recognise that things that you could buy online actually are often on the high street. Um, so I, I'm pledging to make an effort to check what is on my local high street more often than just immediately assuming that I'll get it online and going there as the um, is, is the first port of call because uh, our local high streets now are selling way more than than they were pre-COVID um, and we find that, that most of the stuff that we want is actually there. Hmm. Thanks Annalisa. I see in the chat we've got a few people um, writing their pledges. So Dora um, is pledging to visit her local BYO shop and will ensure to look first for items that you need to buy before going to other shops. Um, and Anna, you've also said that you are um, purchasing all Christmas gifts and items locally or directly with the store and plastic free this year um, and looking to shop at your BYO um, to reduce your plastic um, where possible. So thank you both for sharing. Um, anybody else want to add anything? Annalisa? Um, this was actually a question. It wasn't another pledge. Um, I'm just thinking if anyone has any questions in the last couple of minutes. Um, but this this was one for Jamie, actually, that I forgot to ask earlier. Um, how does your app differ from Olio? Um, because I know uh, there are similar apps that do different things. I think Olio does a slightly different thing. And I know it's been mentioned in some other sessions this week. Um, so it'd be really helpful to, to understand what the differences are. Sure. So. Yeah, what, what is amazing to see is that there's loads of platforms which are now fighting food waste, and that's something we always encourage and love to see. Ours uh, with Olio, it's a it's a peer to peer sharing uh, platform. Um, I can't talk much about them themselves, but for us, we're a we're a marketplace, so we connect consumers with businesses who have that who have that surplus food. So those businesses can range from anyone from sort of your local cafe uh, to high street coffee chains and restaurants through to retailers, hotels, contract caterers, and now uh, now even sort of food producers and farmers in some instances. Great. And if I want my local kind of coffee shop or, um, you know, local businesses to enter into this initiative, I just need to go down and say, you should think about using Too Good To Go, please. Um, it's a great initiative. Is that how... Certainly, is. yeah. Please like um, push your local cafes or greengrocers or butchers, fishmongers, or whoever, whoever it may be, um, to think about using Too Good To Go as part of reducing food waste, but embracing the circular economy and sustainable shopping. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you want, you can always ping us an email um, through our through our website and you know tag us in in things on so social media to those businesses that you would love to see on the platform as well. Great, thanks, Jamie. Um, so we're at 12 o'clock. I've just seen Natalie's also put in um, a pledge or you've already stopped shopping for new items um, and only buying secondhand or from impact businesses. Um, so thank you all for uh, contributing to today's session um, and attending. And also thank you to Jamie and Tanya for presenting and sharing your insights into sustainable shopping. Um, so thanks everyone for joining. We do have one more session in our climate summit, which is today actually at 1230 um, and it's about uh, reducing your carbon footprint. So if you're interested, um, you can write in the chat and we can send you a link to join that session. But thank you all for attending. And again, thank you to Jamie and Tanya. Hope you have a good rest of the day and a good weekend. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Tarana, bye. Bye, thank you.